Hello everybody and welcome back to Ruler 101. This week I'm switching things up and trying out a different format, so... Boom. It will hopefully make my job easier, though if you liked the sparkly swooshy effects, get ready for that right at the end when I'm showing you the deck list. That said, let's get into this week's ruler. Boom. Little Red Riding Hood. Now, this isn't the actual Little Red, as we would find out later, this is actually Cthulhu. One of the most beloved Cthulhu, as far as characters go, but still, she's evil. But, um, it's pretty cool that she started out as like, uh, as like a hero character. Like, Grimm summoned her, or he thought he summoned her, and she was his, like, partner when they were fighting Dracula. And then Abdul showed up and Yarthlotep was like, oh, hey, haha, uh, just kidding, I lied myself into uh, tricking myself into tricking you and 99 lies and ha! But to start with, we got this beautiful little abomination. And she's not too much on her front side, just a J activate pay zero. You cannot play this ability if you haven't put any moon into a field this turn. So basically, you need a moon card to enter your field. It doesn't have to stay there, it just has to enter. But then her J activate is zero, and that's pretty cool when you see her other side. Little Red, the wolf girl. She just went super crazy evil person. Like, just like, boom. Uh, anyway, she gains swiftness, she has an enter, this card deals 800 damage to target resonator, and she has at end of turn return this card to its ruler side. She is also a 1200 200. Uh, that sound familiar? Because that's Scarlet. Scarlet is her. Boom. I blew your mind. Um, at the time, there weren't. Like, there was. Uh, I think Flames of the Outer World was the only thing that could really kill her, aside from blocking. And her being a 12 200 was. Meh. It was an eh. You basically would uh, play a moon, flip, explode a resonator, and then if they had no blockers whatsoever, you would attack. Or if you had some way to deal with a blocker. Which is pretty cool. However, with today's technology, I believe she can be strong again. Um, her flip is free. And now that we have a bunch of low-cost moons, hmm, it's a bit easier to flip, so you can get that 800 damage all over the place. Also, being a 12-200 with natural swiftness is pretty cool. Admittedly, her end of turn effect is kind of eh, but it does stop uh, your opponent from doing anything to her on your turn. Anyway, let's get... Um, the deck that I would run with her would basically be chock full of moon, so I'll take this opportunity to show off all the pretty cool moons and moon tech. Uh, surprisingly enough, Despite looking exactly like a werewolf and being called the wolf girl, she is a little wolf, little wolf girl type and not a werewolf. Even though werewolves, when she was released, were a type for her and she has a moon that is red for werewolves. Oh, it's infuriating. Like, just could have made her a werewolf, would have been... Ten times as cool. You already had uh, Dracula being a vampire, but no, no. Uh. <sighs> anyway, <laughs> um, my little uh, uh, irritation with that aside, let's get into the moons. They're all blue and white, <laughs> and one red. Uh, yeah, weird colors, but it does work because old stones are good stones. Starting with the newest of the cards, Drifting Little Moon. A 500-500 for one, this card cannot attack, or if you, uh, so it can still block, it's a one drop 5-5, five five, so it's going to deter a lot of that early game uh, aggro. It also has Rest. This card deals 400 damage to target Rested Resonator. And... If you, in the rare occasion, it has rest for, rest for Drifting Little Moon you control, destroy target resonator. So if you somehow, <clears throat> somehow manage to get 
uh, all four of these on your field, you can immediately rest all four of them because it's not a rest effect. It is an ability that makes them rest. Oh, I just realized it doesn't... Mm. I mean, I guess they updated the CR so it's implied you can't rest something that's already rested. But it used to say rest for recovered. But re anyway, um, destroy. you can just destroy a resonator outright. But that 400 damage is actually super relevant. Like, early game, because you're going to be flipping pretty early with her. You Any blockers that they might have, like a Tama or like one of those new 1-drop 4-4s, this is just going to explode it. Like, turn 1, call stone, turn 2, drop a drifting little moon, switch, uh, flip the girl, swing, they block with a Tama, you go, aha, that Tama's rested, bitch! And then you just explode their blocker and they take 12 to the face. Woo. It also really adds up, like, if you only have two of these, you're going to be able to kill most blockers or attackers. It can also be used like that, so don't worry. This card, I think, is, like, super underrepresented, and I feel like it's really, really, really good. Just because of, of the combat control it uh, puts out there. But, enough about me uh, going on and on about my blue cards. Next we have Tsukiyomi Noble. Another moon. These all have the moon typing, and I don't know why she has the moon typing, but whatever. She is two white will and zero, um, because it's covered, I feel I should mention that. Just because there have been times in the past where there was a number there, looking at you, Prissia, and certain groups, my group, didn't see that there was a number there, and so we were like, oh, that costs two, this card is mind-boggling. And then later we realized it cost three, and suddenly we were all over it like no one played it anymore mm, what will big difference anyway players cannot play activate abilities of resonators they control unless they control the moon that includes will abilities so sacred elves do nothing this is a two drop by the way uh did i mention that yeah it's so good it's also a five seven for two which blocks a whole lot of um what is it what, what would it be um, it blocks a whole lot of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Early aggression. There we go. Uh, so if you're going first, they're playing a two drop that's going to be like a Lancelot, this can block it. And if they happen to have an addition, you can go ahead and pay a moon to awaken her to destroy target non-moon addition. And if you do, you, she gets two plus one plus one counters. So she becomes a seven nine, which is godly. But the activate abilities is the most important part because her being a moon in, in itself is what makes her good. So you play her, she says, your opponent cannot activate, acti cannot play activate abilities of resonators they control. So their Tama pops, their, uh, uh, what is it? Their, their Sylvia cooking buffs, their sacred elves, their Melfies, all of it is just suddenly gone it's nil and did i mention that this is a two will answer to that really 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 annoying faily combo yes it is anyway um this she's just a moon out of nowhere and she's really strong because of it but next we have an actual moon like a real actual moon it's transparent but i can see it and it's clearly refracting some light get your shit together Anyway, one blue and one. Magic stones with non-will activate abilities don't recover during recovery phase. This is usually a one of just because there's not many stones that actually have other abilities, but if your opponent is running them, this is just a free, oh hey, your stones don't untap. Um, and it's honestly really good. Like, if you let your opponent, re say your opponent calls stone, they get a spirit stone, and then they call stone, they get like, oh, I... I don't know. Just anything with another activate ability. If you drop this, they're suddenly back to turn one. And they are super sad. Um, it's also a moon, so moon. Next up, bloody moon, the red moon. The thing that does werewolf things for the werewolf ruler that's not a werewolf. Anyway, one red and two. Continuous. Each werewolf you control gains plus 200, plus 200. Activate. Banish this card. Destroy target special magic stone. 
You're not using this for the werewolf buff, you're using it to banish it. Because when you destroy a special magic stone, that puts them in a dire turn behind. It's really powerful. In fact, they had to ban a card because of this. They banned Apollo because using a card I'm going to show you later, you could play it on turn one, and then your opponent was like, um, okay, I guess I'll, um, call stone? I'll destroy it. Oh, I guess I'll create a will. Um, GG, I guess? <laughs> like, seriously, this... It, like that is ban it like destroying a special magic stone unless you're running against something that doesn't use special stones uh, which is basically nothing <laughs> um, unless you're running into one of those decks that's putting them nearly a turn behind exactly a turn behind unless they have ramp but that's not the only move we've got one more pale moon the exact I think they're in the yeah, they're in the same set, so these are like the polar opposite cards. It's like, oh, there we go, haha. Ha. Each were rabbit you control gains plus 200, plus 200. Eh, were rabbits are kind of relevant, but not super relevant. Anyway, it has activate, pay blue, banish this card, return target resonator to its owner's hand. Well, <laughs> being able to return a resonator to its owner's hand on a stick, and also having this be a moon. A moon that does something, like, so that you're not just playing a moon to play a moon. Like, you play it, and then you can use it for something instead of it just sitting there like, Oh boy, I now have this moon, and my wolf girl is on her other side. What am I gonna do? It's useless. Woo. But we're also running a couple, um... Well, I mean, if you're building the deck, you probably want more than one of these and run some were-rabbits. Um... There's like one were rabbit uh, that in particular that's pretty good. It's Solstice Knight. Um, I'm not including it here because it's not super good. It's a three drop that searches you a moon to your hand, but it's honestly super underpowered for a three drop, so I wouldn't really use it. But speaking of moon searching, we have that card that's super broken and utter. Yeah. <sighs> Anyway, Moon Incarnation, one blue. Search your deck for a Moon Edition, reveal it and put it in your hand, then shuffle your main deck. Awakening two, you may put a Moon Edition from your hand into your field. Okay, so the way it worked was you used Time Spinning Witch, who could produce a Time Will to use for activate abilities, right? And then you played a, um, then you played a, uh, uh, what is it? An Apollo, which could generate a Moon Will to, pe to uh, spend for Awakenings. So, turn one. Call stone. Oh, look, it's a blue stone. I will play Moon Incarnation. Then use Time Spinning Witch's ability as well as Apollo's ability to awaken it and get a bloody moon. And da ah, ha ha ha. I love being turns ahead. Um, but it was a broken combo and Apollo got banned for it. Woo. But it's still a pretty okay card, especially if you really need moons. Like. I'd run this as a two or three of, just so you have those extra moon copies, so you're not just like, I have no moons, I have no ruler, I've lost! Um, anyway, for our final card, before I get into the deck, I'd run Campanella, the Milky Way Moon. This is honestly one of the weirder cards, in my opinion, just because of the art. Like, the art really throws me off. It's just, it's weird. It's really weird. But anyway, she's one blue and one for a fairy tale fantasy. Attack 200, defense 200. Enter. Search your main deck for a water moon card and put it into your field. Then shuffle your main deck. This card gains plus 200, plus 200 as long as you control a moon. When a resonator is put into a graveyard from your field, you may banish this card. If you do, put that resonator from its owner's graveyard into his or her hand. Okay. So, she, you pay two and you get a three cost addition. Water moon. Pale moon, transparent moon, uh, what is it? Transparent moon. Um, just those two. You search one out and put it in your field. Easy, easy. For two will, you're getting a body as well. And it's a 4-4 as long as you control a moon, which you're probably going to. So, two will for a 4-4, not super great. But then she searches you a moon. And when one of your other resonators dies, you can save it by banishing her. So, she's kind of got a two-card effect. Um... And uh, that's that's really relevant and super cool. And also, her art is really, really... 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What's the right word? What's the right word? Ooh. I don't know. There's a lot going on, and it's highly detailed. And it looks like... I want to say Miyazaki type. Like, it sort of looks Miyazaki-ish. But, eh, that's my opinion. If I were running a deck, I'd include all these cards and then, like, a couple little edits. Like, maybe you could go completely not what I did, but that's what I did. Um, it's still in its beginning stages because I'm not too familiar with moons and this card in general. But I felt that that was the best way to go just so you could get the maximum number of flips for relatively cheap and you didn't have to worry about a whole mess of nonsense. Some improvements, maybe like a Flutes Water Dragon, just so you don't have to worry about like calling a stone and flipping, you know? Um, besides that, not much. Not much. You could go like a werewolf version, but that would have absolutely no interaction besides Bloody Moon with your J Ruler. So maybe not. I mean, trust me, when I saw her, I was like, oh, we're making a werewolf deck. We're making a werewolf deck. But then I realized that all the good moons are blue or white. And the one red moon is terrible as a four of. Um, just because you want to be able to, like, search it and cheat it out and that sort of thing. And if you get a handful of them, you're really sad. And even if you don't, like, you want to banish it and not buff your werewolf resonators. So it's like... Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Um, let me know what you think. What, what sort of alterations would you do, or do you have a list? I'd love to see it. Um, besides that, I think it's it. Oh, uh, quick reminder, we're, cl we're quickly closing in on the final day to uh, uh, enter for the contest to win a Game Squared shirt, as well as a starter deck from New Valhalla. Of your choice of your choosing of course I already got those all ordered I just need to pick a winner and get your size but um, that will only happen after the official release of course because I need the decks so I can give you the deck you know what I'm saying bye bye <laughs> Ooh, what was that <clears throat> Ooh, goodbye